Bushcraft Global has invited Innerbark Outdoors on their first expedition into the Amazon. Join me as I experience the culture and learn how the indigenous people thrive. So right now we're doing a trap line utilizing these palms at about two or three feet tall. We're going to be going all the way through the woods, more or less 200 meters with this. And at spaces in between, we're going to be putting intermittent snares. An animal will hit the line and as like a human, they'll go through the easiest way possible. So they'll hit the line and go horizontal with it and then go through the space. Now they use this in research over North America for uh, reptiles and amphibians with solid fence lines called a drift fence. And that's it. Time to go to work, boys. The biggest part of this job is to gather enough materials in order to make the trap line as long as you want it to be. With a small team, this can easily be done within an afternoon. But with a larger group of guys, there tends to be a lot more noise, which you have to be very aware of, because the more sound that you make, the more that it disturbs the animals around, and the longer it's going to take for the animals to get back to their daily routines. The species of palm that we're using has spines on the bottom of all the leaves, just like the ones when we made a fish trap. These will resist the weather a lot better, so it'll be better for a longer term installation. Palm leaves are deposited in different piles throughout the length of the entire line, so it's easy to distribute material. To get these secured into the ground, they're moved up and down like a piston to go deeper and deeper into the hole. Another type of material that we use is a different kind of palm. These palms also resist the weather pretty good, and they're also very abundant depending on where you are. So instead of gathering all these different spine palms from all over the forest, we just grabbed what was local and what worked best in the general area. And these leaves are more or less piled into a line. Here, Alberto is starting on one of the traps that are going to be lining the entire trap line. With the palms bent at 90 degrees, it forms a very critical part of the trap. But first he needs to clear out the hole so it's more inviting for an animal to walk through. The first thing to do is to make sure that his trigger stick is the right length. Too long and it can interfere with other sticks that are around, and too short, it won't even work. He also makes sure that the spring mechanism is going to be in line with where his trigger is going to be. I'm not sure what the technical name for the stick is, but I'm just going to call it the sear. This stick is going to be attached to the spring, and it's also going to be touching the trigger. So it's very important that it's at the right length. And also that it's smooth and doesn't hang up on anything. So the bark has to be taken off. While Alberto is setting the trap, the spring is set underneath his armpit so it doesn't snap up and hit someone nearby. A groove is cut near the top of the sear so that the string won't slip. Yeah, 
and the top of the sear is tucked underneath one of the horizontal branches that are made during the 90 degree break in one of the trap poles. And the trigger is placed underneath the sear so that it doesn't want to flip out. And sometimes a little bit of fine tuning and smoothing out is all that's required to make a very fine trigger. A ramp is a really important part of this trap because it makes it so the animal doesn't run into or snag onto the trap and steps on top of it instead. Biting and bending a small twig makes it so it keeps the same shape. The last thing to do is put the loop right on top, covering the widest area possible. And that's how it works. And this is just the first of many that are going to be on the trap line. The next evening, we go ahead and check our trap line. Maintaining a trap line is extremely important to its effectiveness. We send in small teams so that they make less noise and therefore scare less animals in the process. Not only do we check to see if we caught any animals, but we also see if anything might have gotten accidentally tripped off by wind or rain, and also if a trap trigger is not sensitive enough as well. And some days, you get pretty darn lucky. Here, we caught a bird of paradise in one of the traps. Now the only thing to do is take it back to camp and cook it up. In our next video, we're going to go over blade maintenance in the jungle. Inner Bark Outdoors coverage of the Bushcraft Global Expedition is brought to you by Tops Knives, the Operator's Edge. And Prepare One. Prepare today, ready tomorrow.